today's lesson. Today we're going to look at combinations of transformations. So what we're going to be doing is throwing all possible transformations together and seeing how we can handle those kinds of graphs. So let me start off with an example. This first example, we're going to just go ahead and graph the following function. y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 squared minus 4. Now, there are a multiple different kinds of approaches to doing these kinds of graphs. Um, probably back in grade 11, uh, you learned to just go ahead and directly graph these, do some of the shifts and so on. Um, I'm going to encourage a slightly different approach. And what we're going to do in this approach is first of all decide what are the horizontal transformations and what are the vertical transformations. So we're really trying to identify what are we doing to the x's, what are we doing to the y's, and then incorporating uh, that information into producing the graph. So what are we doing to the x's? Well, first thing that I see happening here is uh, an x plus 3. So what we have happening is that we're taking away 3 from our x values. Now this is the same as shifting everything 3 to the left. All x values you subtract 3. And that's all we're doing horizontally. What about vertically? Well, the first thing that I see happening is that we're going to be timesing um, by negative 1 half. Okay, so I'm going to mark that down. And that gets followed by take away 4. So these are vertical changes. Now the next thing I'm going to do is think back to our graph, in this case, um, it being a parabola, uh, one of the very important points in the original function was 0, 0, the vertex. And so what I'm going to do is now incorporate these transformations and see where this point would now end up. Where is this vertex going to end up? Well, horizontally, I'm going to subtract 3. So I'm going to take 0, this x value, and subtract 3. So it becomes negative 3. Now what about the y value? Well, I'm going to times it by negative 1 half. Now that keeps it as 0. And then I'll subtract 4. So we have negative 4. So the vertex has moved from 0, 0 to negative 3, negative 4. I'm going to take one more point that was on our original function. And when I say the original function, I'm really referring to this f of x equals x squared, the parabola before we made any transformations. So let's take a point like 2, 4. That's a pretty good point, and see what happens to it. Well, what are we going to do to the x's? Horizontally, minus 3. So the 2 gets moved over to negative 1. What about the y value, the 4? Well, you times that by negative 1 half, so that becomes negative 2, and then you subtract 4, so that's negative 6. So these are now the new locations of these old points under all of these transformations. And so now we're ready to produce a picture, and I haven't left myself much room, so I'm just going to do that um, right in the middle here. And uh, what we are going to produce will look something like this. The vertex is now at negative 3, negative 4. So 3 to the left and down 4. So that's where our vertex is. And we have another point that we can help to get a shape of the parabola. Negative 1, negative 6. So 1 to the left and down 6. So there it is. There's the shape of the parabola, and of course it's symmetrical, so we're going to have that shape reflected over on the left side. So there's our graph with all these transformations affecting it. Now, um, one more thing to note, and that's going to be coming apparent in the other examples, but the order of the operations is, is very important because if you don't follow kind of a bed mass approach, you'll possibly get the wrong um, outcome over here. 
And when I say a bed mass approach, if you have multiple transformations occurring, either in the horizontal or in the vertical, then the order that you want to do it in is anything that is multiplied or divided, you want to do first, followed by any additions or subtractions. So when I say bed mass, well, we're not really using the B, the brackets, and the exponents part of it, but we certainly are using multiplication first, or division, but in this case we really run into more multiplication, followed by the addition subtraction. And you'll notice that when I did the vertical changes here, I multiplied by the negative one half first, followed by the subtracting of four. So my order in that case um, was following this kind of a guideline, and that's very important that you stick to that. Okay. Let's do another example, and uh, each of the examples that I'm going to do is going to show you um, a couple of uh, different approaches to different kinds of questions that you'll be running into. Okay, so the next example, we have um, a graph that's provided for you, but no function specifically uh, provided. So in this example, I'm going to produce a graph. And uh, the graph that I had in mind um, looks something like this. We're going to go uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4 to the left, up 2, and down 2. And I've tried to keep it fairly simple, but I wanted to represent a number of different things that you could run into. So I'm going to do some key points here. And then the graph has a nice sort of a curved look to it, something like that. So this is f of x. And what I want to do now is say, well, if that's f of x, here's what I want to graph. So my challenge is to graph the following little twists and turns onto f of x. Well, I want to graph something that looks like this. Negative 2 and f of, and we'll just really try to Make things good and scrambled here. Okay, so quite a quite a lot of little transformation, a whole lot of twos going on there. That's okay. We're going to unravel that in a moment. So that's our challenge. We have to graph this given this information. Now, um, one thing that's an important step here is uh, before we carry on, we're going to do a little bit of rearranging here, a little bit of spring cleaning. What we see happening here is uh, it looks pretty good, some of it, like this, minus 2 times our function. But this part here isn't very good. And the reason for that is we have a number that's in front of the x, and then we have this extra number also in the brackets here. And what we need to do is factor out any number that is in front of the x. So in this case, I'm going to factor out negative 2, and that's going to leave me with an x. And then I have to say, well, what would I tuck in with the x here, remembering that we have negative 2 on the outside of the brackets. So in order to produce the 2 that we have up here, the positive 2, I need to put a negative 1 there. Now let me just uh, emphasize, oh, and then we have the plus 2. It's really a good idea to check this stuff, just to make sure we haven't gotten any signs mixed up. We have negative 2 times x, negative 2x, check. Negative 2 times negative 1, which is positive 2, check. Okay, so in this factored form, we're now going to get the correct transformations. So if you do run into this, where they have uh, something in front of the x, and the function acting on more than just that, that, that is an additional little term or number, you do have to factor out whatever is in front of that x, or you're going to get the wrong horizontal shift. And now I'm going to make an analysis. I'm going to do this, horizontal and vertical. Okay, so what are we doing to the x's. And keep in mind, we want to identify any multiplication first. So what are we doing to x as far as multiplication? Oh, there it is. Negative 2 will be um, the horizontal um, effect. 
And remember, you have to take the reciprocal of that number. So we're actually timesing by negative one half. Okay. So it's the reciprocal of that number that we're multiplying by, and that means we're going to have a compression by a factor of one half, or if you like to think of it as negative one half. Um, and then what are we doing horizontally? We're adding one. Okay, so that's that set of instructions. Vertically, well, we're multiplying by negative two, so uh, no need to make any mystery out of this. That one's straightforward, and we're adding two. Okay, so what I need now is um, some good points in the original function, and we're going to identify where those points end up under these transformations. So, some of the points I've made fairly obvious here. So we're going to take negative 4, 0. We're going to take negative 2, negative 2. We're going to take 0, 0. Um, 2, 2. And 4, 0. And we want to see where do these guys end up with these transformations. Now, my suggestion is, do all the x's at the same time. That way you're only thinking about the same little guidelines. And when you've done all the x's, then use these guidelines and do all the y's. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. So, let's see where these guys are going. Well, negative 4 times that by negative 1 half. So that becomes positive 2 and add 1. So we get 3. Negative 2 times by negative 1 half is positive 1. Add 1. You get 2. 0 times by negative a half is 0. Add 1 is 1. 2 times negative a half, negative 1. Plus 1 is 0. And 4 times negative a half is negative 2. Plus 1 is negative 1. Okay. Now I go to my y values and I times each by negative 2. So that'll be 0. Plus 2 is 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. Uh, 0, and, and this is the nice part of this, if you see a 0 up here and a 0 down here, well, they're going to transform the same way. So why do all that work twice? Once we see it, we can just copy that information down, assuming we've done it correctly, which I hope we have. Um, 2 times negative a half is negative 4, plus 2 is negative 2. So now that I've got all these points, I'm essentially ready to go and produce my graph. Now I'm going to just make a little room right underneath so that it's uh, kind of got a little bit of a, uh, something to compare it to, which is kind of helpful, as you'll see in a moment. So I'm going to produce my grid right underneath. And... Uh, what do we got here? Well, I got 3 and 2, so 3 and up 2. And then I've got 2 and up 6, so 2 to the right and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then I've got 1 to the right and up 2, 1 to the right and up 2. And I've got 0 and negative 2, 0 and negative 2. And negative 1 and 2. And now we just got to piece it all together. Well, we see that when you have three points in a row like this, they have a little curved part. So that's what we're going to do. We've got a little curved part from here down like so. And then up there and down like so. So there's our graph. And so you'll find that the points method, identifying your transformations, and then effectively finding some key points, connecting those key points, really makes uh, life a lot easier when it comes to uh, producing a graph, especially if it's a real complicated mess. It's a nice, easier way to do it. Okay, um, one last example on this topic, and then I think uh, that's probably good for now. Okay, in this last topic, uh, again, we're going to try a slightly different format. We're going to give you a function, in this case the square root function, 
and we're going to ask you to produce what this would look like um, if we want the following changes. So here's the list of things we want. It's kind of like a little shopping trip. Uh, what would we want? Well, we want, um, let's see, um, vertical expansion. And how much expansion would we like? Let's see, maybe by a factor of three. Okay, so vertical expansion by a factor of three. And maybe some horizontal compression by a factor of one half. And let's see, we'll reflect across the uh, x-axis. Um, we'll translate 2 to the left. And I think we'll translate up 4. I'll just go ditto up 4. Okay, all we got to do is put all that stuff algebraically together into this function, and we're done. Okay, so what's it going to look like? Well, let's see. Let's start off with... We have a square root function. So let's let's just build on that. Give it a little room just in case we've got to cram some stuff in there. So let's do some of the easy stuff. Vertical expansion by a factor of 3. Okay? So you want to put a 3 in front of your function so that it's vertically expanded by 3. Horizontally, we want to compress the thing by 1 half, which means that in front of the x here, inside our function, we want the reciprocal of this, which is a 2. Okay. Now, we also want to do reflecting across the x-axis. Hmm. Across the x-axis means across like so, so we want to effectively put a negative in front of that 3. So it's not only going to be expanded, but it reflects across the x-axis. Check. Translate 2 to the left. Now here's where I'm going to use more brackets. Okay, so to get 2 to the left, we want to have x plus 2. And that will pull the whole thing 2 to the left. And what else do we want to do? Translate up 4. That's a nice easy one. Up 4. Well, there it is, folks our new function. And with that, I'm going to stop and we'll catch